Welcome to the Grow Your Independent Consulting Business Podcast. I'm Melissa Lieberman, a fellow IC and business coach. On this podcast, I teach you to become a consistently booked independent consultant without becoming a pushy salesperson or working 24 seven. If I can do it, you can too. Listen on to find out how. Welcome to episode 129 of the Grow Your Independent Consulting Business Podcast. Thrilled that you're here joining again this week and excited to dive into today's topic, which is how to generate leads for your consulting advisory retainers. So a couple episodes ago in episode 126, we talked about how to design a consulting advisory retainer offering for your consulting business. And today I want to continue that conversation, moving into the conversation about how do you generate leads for that consulting advisory retainer. So often we think that it's really difficult to sell advisory retainers. And so as a result, we don't even try. And so today I want to demystify this for you so that you are able to add in that consulting advisory retainer into your practice so that you're able to start generating a pipeline of leads for this type of work, and ultimately so that you can deliver work for your consulting clients that's impactful for them, that's fulfilling for you, and also really profitable. You don't have to be trading time for money. You can be trading money for your expertise and value that you're delivering to your clients, which is so much more scalable. So with that, that is what we're going to be focusing in on today. I want to walk you through what I see to be the most important plan as it relates to generating leads for your consulting advisory retainer and uh, components that most of the time we overlook when we start building out a go-to-market or a lead generation plan. So I want to make sure you're not missing these key elements I'm going to share with you here shortly and that you've got a really solid plan in place to start building out a pipeline of these consulting retainer clients. With that being said, just a quick personal update, and then we'll dive in. It is still the month of August as I'm recording this. It is uh, one month of the year we get off from the swim schedule for my kids. So that's been so weird having so much extra time. I have to say, I am not the type of person who loves a lot of extra time. So I've been doing two things. Number one, working a lot more because I love it. I love working and helping clients achieve their goals for their consulting practices. I've started writing a book. So I've filled in some of the extra time with more projects as I tend to do. And then also I've been working on getting more comfortable with not working and things being slow and not overly scheduled. And believe it or not, that's the more uncomfortable work. It is comfortable taking on a new project and starting something new and feeling really busy. It's less comfortable having space and not being overly scheduled from a business perspective and a personal perspective. And so that is my current growth edge as well. So I share that with you again, as a almost a mini podcast episode here. If you notice yourself working a lot, and you think it's because your business is tied to, you know, hourly type production. That may be part of it, but it may also be partly that that's what you're used to and what your brain is, the comfort zone of your brain, and it leads to overworking, getting burned out, and creating an experiment where you're able to test out what does it feel like to be less busy? What does it feel like to have space in my day and not feel like I have a need to go filling it or making another, you know, $250 because that's what I charge per hour for you as an example. I don't charge by the hour, but you see what I'm saying. Okay, so with that being said, and I know you don't want to be charging by the hour either, likely. So that's why we're talking partially about these consulting retainers today. Anyway, a little mini episode for you there. I may turn that into a larger episode sometime in the future about how to not overwork or kind of get back into that zone that you were probably in in corporate, which is, you know, just rushing from meeting to meeting to meeting to responsibility and not really having any space to think. So important to not recreate that for your own health, for your own mental health, for your own goals for balance, and ultimately for your ability to think like a CEO. 
Okay, there's a mini episode for you already. Now let's talk about what we really are here today to talk about, which is how to generate leads for your consulting advisory retainers. So I'll walk you through the agenda here quickly, and then we'll dive into the topic. So today we're going to dive into, I'll start off by sharing with you what I see to be the prerequisites for you to create a pipeline or demand for your advisory retainer offers. So want to make sure that you're aware of what these prerequisites are and you're starting to put these in place. And then we're going to dive into an example of what a lead generation plan would look like for advisory retainer work. I'll give you several examples of what that looks like. And then we'll end the episode today with four very specific lead blockers to you being successful with your lead generation for advisory retainers. And I will pull it together, all of this together for you into a plan that you can put in place, including some guiding questions that will kickstart you into pursuing this part of your business plan as a consultant. So that is our plan for today's episode. And before we do that, step one of our agenda, I will share with you two important companion resources for today's episode. The first is episode 126, which is all about designing consulting advisory retainers. So if you haven't yet listened to that episode, go back and listen to it after this so that you've got these two things together. You've got, you know what you're offering as a consulting advisory retainer, why it's compelling and valuable to your ideal potential consulting clients. And ultimately, you can use that as an important input into the next step, which is today's episode, generating leads for that consulting advisory retainer. And then the second companion resource that I will recommend that you leverage is an assessment that I've created called the Independent Consultants Retainer Readiness Assessment. So it's all about answering a dozen or so questions and will help you to pinpoint exactly how ready you are for consulting advisory retainers and give you a prioritized plan of attack as to how you can address any gaps that you've got in your business right now and make yourself ready to take on this type of clients where you're delivering advisory retainers for your clients, having recurring revenue and really a stable revenue foundation for yourself. Your entire practice could be made up of these advisory retainers or types of retainer work. Or it might be a mix where you're doing a little bit of project-based work and a little bit of advisory. So however you want it to look, go take that retainer readiness assessment. You can find it at the URL icretainer.com. So those are the two initials for independent consultants, icretainer.com. All right, so go take that. I'm excited for you to get those results and a very specific action plan for you and your business as it relates to adding and improving the advisory retainers that you're offering. Okay, now that you've got those companion resources, let's dive into the first step here, which are those prerequisites. What are the prerequisites to you creating demand for your advisory retainer offers? What are the prerequisites that I commonly see independent consultants needing to have in place before you're able to go out and successfully create a pipeline of advisory retainer work. So there are three of them. The first is knowing what your, I'm using these words very intentionally, what is your valuable retainer offer? What is it? It's not just to kind of call me if you need me. It's more specific than that. Although that might be the end result where they're calling you where they need you, but it's more specific around the value that you're delivering to those clients who are hiring you from an advisory perspective. And the best way to knock off this prerequisite from your checklist is to go listen to episode 126 and put that episode into action. Or schedule a consultation with me and we can do it together if you're looking for a coach to help you through this process. Okay, so that's the first prerequisite, designing your valuable retainer offer and knowing really clearly what it is, why someone would buy it, what the results and value are for them, and getting yourself out of that trap that a lot of us fall into, especially when you're first doing this, which is worrying about 
what that equates to on an hourly basis. You want to decouple that when you design your offer and really think about the ultimate impact of your ideal client having access to you. So that's step one in a prerequisite perspective. The second prerequisite is for you to specify in a really clear way what your goal is. You're probably not surprised if you've been listening to this podcast that I will have said this to you, but it's really important. What I often see happening, especially when consultants are trying to add advisory retainers into their practice, it becomes a, well, let's see what happens type of a goal. I would love to sell retainers. I even want to be more intentional about selling retainers. I'll just see what happens. That, my friend, is not a way to get a result that you're looking for. That is not the way to take the bull by the horns, as they say, to make a viable advisory retainer income stream in your business. Instead, the prerequisite sounds like I am committed to having one 10K advisory client on my roster by the end of this quarter. That's so clear, right? That's you stating your very clear intention. And then you'll start to leverage some of the tools I'm going to share with you here in a minute to put that work into place versus, well, I'll see what happens, or I hope the right type of client comes along and I will offer an advisory retainer to them so passive, right? You want to move out of that passive state that you are likely in if you're like most consultants, especially with respect to this topic. We want to move out of the let's see what happens, hope for the best plan and move into a very specific goal that you're setting for yourself. I'm giving you an example here. I will have one 10k advisory client on my roster by the end of this quarter. When I say that to you, what are your thoughts? How does that make you feel? Does it make you feel nervous, anxious, defeated ahead of time? Really think about the goal that you want to set and assess your level of commitment to that goal. Even if, you know, that particular example I just gave you by the end of this quarter, what if it ends up taking you four months instead of three? How incredible would that be? You will have taught yourself how to design and generate leads and ultimately sell a retainer. And so what if it took you four months instead of three? That's such an important prerequisite here to your retainer advisory pipeline. Okay, so prerequisite number one was to design your valuable offer. Prerequisite number two was to create a very specific goal that is proactive instead of passive. And then the third prerequisite that you want to have in place and if you've been listening to this podcast, you're not going to be surprised, is your valuable, what I call the valuable mindset that goes with this. This is an important thing to be putting in place in advance and also continuously cultivating. Cultivating things on purpose, such as my advice is valuable. Ideal clients will want to pay for my advice. Ideal clients will want to pay for access to me. It's worth it to them. Those types of things versus they're not going to want to pay $10,000 a month for, you know, three conversations with me. It's not worth it. Of course, that mindset is going to get you in a very different headspace and set of actions or likely procrastination than it is purposefully cultivating your valuable mindset. And I'll dive into this in a lot more detail here in a minute. But those are the three prerequisites. Do you need to have them all locked down and clear and in place beforehand? Not necessarily. You can certainly evolve those three prerequisites, especially the valuable mindset and the valuable offer. But you definitely want to start out this process with those three things defined as best you can. All right. And then they'll evolve over time. I would suggest not evolving your goals. Set that one and then commit everything you have to it till you reach the goal. And again, it might take you longer than a quarter or however time frame you specified, but you want to create that goal that's something you really commit to and make it happen and then figure out what you want to adjust to make it easier for you and faster for you to accomplish those goals in the future. Okay, so those are the three prerequisites that you want to be putting in place. And then once you've got those three things in place or in process, then you're going to want to make yourself a plan. 
a lead generation plan, I will give you a very simple one. As it relates to selling advisory retainers, it is oftentimes the most straightforward path to start with one of two or both of these approaches. The first, start with adding on retainers as an option as you're proposing new engagements. So right now you might be proposing a project type of an engagement. Going forward, you might say to yourself, I am going to always include a advisory retainer as option number two, as something I'm adding on. I'm going to get really good at explaining the value of that and why they would want to take that option. That's a great way to start because you've already generated the lead. You now are basically leveraging that lead for two purposes. Number one, what you might have been proposing to them in the first place. And now you're adding on the advisory retainer as an option. That's a great way to start your pipeline for advisory type work. The second easy way to start, I won't say easy, I'm going to say uh, most straightforward. Let's say it that way. The second most straightforward way for you to start building out your lead gen process and pipeline for advisory type work is by leveraging advisory work as a follow on offer. So you've done a lot of work for an existing client or even a past client. And you come back to them and say, look, during the course of this engagement, I noticed that we were doing a lot of sidebars and strategizing on X, Y, and Z. And I know that this project has ended, but I would love to offer you the opportunity to continue working together in a slightly different capacity, where it's more advisory in nature, and you're able to leverage me as an external sounding board, as an external strategist, and continue working in that way that we have already been working together kind of informally, make it more formal. You see, that can be so easy because you've already got context in place of how you had been working with that client and using that as a way to frame up a follow-on offer. So that's one of the easiest, most straight, again, I'm not going to say easy, but I will say most straightforward. When you're thinking about your lead generation plan and the goal that you set for yourself as it relates to advisory retainer work, start off with what might be the most straightforward. I just gave you a couple of examples. It can be more easier, more straightforward to propose as an add-on option with an engagement that you're already in, is already in the pipeline. You can go back to past clients or even existing clients and make them this additional offer of advisory retainer type work because you've got that shared context in place already. So that's why those two options are much more straightforward. And then over time, you want to evolve to selling standalone retainers, potentially. So that can be another component of your lead generation plan is thinking about, okay, if I want to sell standalone retainers to brand new clients, or past clients, that is more retainer work from the outset, it might be the only thing that they're leveraging you for, what might that need to look like from a lead generation process and perspective and thinking about it from that approach and then building out your lead gen plan accordingly. But I would recommend if you haven't yet sold any advisory work, start with that more straightforward approach, which is proposing advisory work as one of your options in your proposals for the pipeline you know that you've already got and or also proposing advisory retainers as follow on work for existing and past clients. That's a great way to start out with your pipeline and identify, you know, five or 10 ideal prospects that you might want to start pursuing. So that is an approach from a lead gen plan perspective and gives you a framework to start thinking about. I want to bring this to life by sharing a couple of real life examples with you, three of them, actually, three real life examples of how to go about building a pipeline for your advisory work. The first example is uh, I had a scenario where a consultant was constantly getting called by one of her former colleagues for advice. 
it was ebbing and flowing. Sometimes it would be quite frequently, a couple times a week even, and then it would taper off and then it would increase again. So it was this informal relationship between two former colleagues. And, you know, we all love to call our former colleagues and ask them for advice or think about, oh, this person knows so much more about this particular topic than I do. I'm going to give them a call. When that's happening to you and you are a consultant running a business, If it's a one-off thing here or there, I wouldn't recommend this necessarily. But if it's something where it is very clear that the person calling you or the people calling you really could benefit from a more structured mechanism to gain your access to your advice, and where you're thinking about them more proactively because you're in a consulting arrangement, helping them to kind of see two or three steps ahead of the curve rather than just reactively calling you. It can be really valuable to offer that type of person an advisory retainer. It might sound something like, we have these types of conversations periodically. This is something I do as offer as part of my consulting practice. Would it make sense to make it more formal? And oftentimes, those people who are calling you for your advice are very open to making this a fair compensation kind of a scenario one that benefits both of you. Because you're making it more formal, it benefits them because you're not just reacting whenever they call, you're thinking again, more proactively about them and engaged with them more intentionally and purposefully. And then on the other hand, then they don't have to feel guilty when they're calling you asking you for advice where they probably know that this is something that you do as part of your business. Some people will say no, but that's not a problem. You've got to be okay with them. You offering this, it's what you do as a business. It's not your hobby. And being okay with whatever their response is. And they might not call you anymore for your advice. And that's being okay with that too. So that's one example of how to create a real life example of how to create a demand for your consulting advisory offering and ultimately start filling up your pipeline. The second is to, you know, as I gave you an example just a moment ago, offer to an advisory retainer to a past client. So a very specific real life example, I had a consultant who I was working with as their coach, and they noticed that one of their past clients, you know, the company was starting to grow. And they were getting at the point where it looked like all signs were indicating that there were some exit plans coming into play. And so the consultant that I was working with reached out to their past client and said, you know, look, I've been thinking about you and the exit strategy. I've been noticing X, Y, and Z. And I've been working with a few other similar consulting clients that are in that same timeline in their businesses. I thought it might be really valuable for us to spend some time together working on the things that I see getting those other consulting clients stuck with their exit and see if you might benefit from an external perspective. Some you know, That type of a conversation is what the consultant had with their past consulting clients. And that turned into a lead and ultimately into an advisory client for them. So it is being proactive, reaching out to those past clients with a very specific set of recommendations based on what you're seeing, and then giving them the opportunity to decide or not whether or not it would be valuable to continue discussing a advisory retainer type of a arrangement. And the third and final real life example that hopefully will get your thought processes moving is just generally networking. I had a consultant who I was working with as their coach And they were doing a lot of networking for the purposes of building up awareness about what they do, you know, meeting people who could potentially be clients or refer them to, you know, potential clients, just their general networking process that they have in place in their business. And it became very apparent in one of these networking conversations with a brand new person they were just meeting that this individual was really struggling with this potential consulting client was really struggling with some situations that were happening in their business. And the consultant knew for sure that the perspective and the past work that they had done in this area could really benefit this particular potential consulting client. 
I know we're talking about a lot of different people in this episode, so hopefully I'm articulating it very clearly about, you know, which role the person is playing in the story that I'm recount, reaccounting for you, recounting for you. I'm not saying the right word, but you know what I mean. Okay, so basically in this networking conversation that the consultant was having with a, another human, they were talking about challenges that other human was having, you know, as they were running their business unit. And the consultant said to them, you know, look, I'm seeing this so often right now. This is a really prevalent thing going on. And I've been helping others in that same boat that you're describing to create a plan of attack and notice where their blind spots are, leverage some of the things that are working from an overall industry perspective, and put in a holistic plan in place that tackles this particular issue. Would you be interested in setting up a process where we do a brainstorming session and start thinking about what that might be looking like to help support you, knowing what I'm seeing kind of from a broader perspective. And then that turned into a lead and ultimately into an advisory client for the consultant that I was just describing to you. So those give you some three really clear, hopefully real life examples of how to take a scenario and turn it into a consulting advisory retainer type of a lead for yourself and ultimately into a client for yourself. So those give you some ideas to bring together the lead generation plan that I shared with you a few minutes ago. Okay, so now that we've got your thought process going on where these leads might come from or how to turn conversations into leads, let's move into the blockers that I most commonly see as it relates to generating leads for your advisory retainers. They boil down to four buckets. Number one, the way you're thinking about yourself can very easily become a blocker. Let me give you a couple of examples. The way you're thinking about yourself, and these are very common types of thought processes that I see that get in the way of you moving from, I want to implement advisory retainers in my business to I now have leads for consulting advisory clients comes down to these four things. So the first are the thoughts about you. One of them uh, very, you may relate to this, that I commonly see is I don't want to be pushy. Or you might think this person doesn't trust me yet. Or this potential client consulting client, I probably don't know enough to help them they probably have people on staff that can do the same type of thing that I might be giving advice for. Those kinds of thoughts about yourself are going to create blockers for you to be able to generate leads and ultimately clients for retainer offers. So you, in order to overcome that blocker, that first blocker, the way you're thinking about yourself and how possible it is for you to successfully generate leads and sell and deliver retainers, advisory retainers, you want to know, be, first of all, be aware of where those thoughts are not in your favor and then start redirecting them or reframing them. And so some of those thoughts that I just shared examples, you may reframe them into, you know, I've got valuable experience to offer. I provide value because I'm external. There may be other people in the organization that have similar skill sets, but just the mere fact that you're external and you are someone that they can talk to openly is incredibly valuable. So that's the first blocker is noticing where your thoughts are about yourself and you offering advisory retainers and delivering advisory retainers and notice where you're talking yourself out of your ability to generate leads and deliver these successfully and then use some of the examples I gave you to reframe that, to open up the possibility for yourself. You don't need to spend time justifying why it might not work. That is incredibly harmful <laughs> to the success of your business. And most of us, that's where we spend most of our time is thinking about why things won't work. That is not helpful. We want to notice when we're doing that and then reframe it so that it opens up that possibility that then we can start problem solving from that point or taking action from that point. So that's the first of those four lead generation blockers are the quality of the thoughts about you. The second of the blockers is the quality of the thoughts about your advisory offer itself. 
a lot of times we have a thought process of this thing that I do providing advisory retainers. This comes naturally to me. It's not, we don't even realize how valuable whatever it is that we're providing support around. It just seems like everyone has this knowledge somehow. We were born with it. It's not valuable. Or the client already knows this and they're not going to need help with it. And so notice where you're having those types of thoughts about your advisory offer. Obviously, if you don't think your advisory offer is valuable, then of course your potential clients aren't going to think that it's valuable. We've talked about you selling yourself first before you can go out and start having these conversations in a meaningful way and generate leads. So then the the reframing of that could be something about it's possible that this is something that they want. Let's explore it versus you just deciding ahead of time that it's not valuable and they won't want it. The third of the four lead generation blockers is your thoughts about your potential client. It is very common as a consultant to think things like, I don't want to put them on the spot. I don't want to make them feel awkward. And so therefore you don't have that conversation, for example, that I was just sharing with you a moment ago of, hey, we have this kind of informal conversation periodically, you know, with someone who's just calling you to get your advice. Let's make this more formal. If your thought process about that potential client is, I don't want to put them on the spot, it might make them feel awkward, then of course, you're not going to offer them a retainer and you'll never know if they would would have purchased it and created that formal relationship with you. And therefore, you there is no lead in your pipeline, right? So a reframing of this, once you're aware of that blocker is something along the lines of, I'm going to offer this and they can decide if it's for them or not. I'm not going to decide for them. It doesn't have to feel awkward. It's simply you making an invitation to them and then they can decide, you know, if they want to talk more about it or not. And therefore, you then know if you have a lead or not, right? And then the fourth of those four lead generation blockers is your thoughts about lead generation as a process. A lot of times we think things like it's really hard to create leads for, especially for advisory retainers. I don't know what I'm doing. Again, those are low quality thoughts that are not going to help you advance as a business owner in the goals that you're setting for yourself. So noticing that you're having those thoughts, they are not facts. It is not hard. It does not have to be hard, for example, to generate leads for your consulting business for advisory type work. But first, you need to know that is not a fact. That is one of the thought processes you have right now. And then to overcome that blocker, redirecting it to a thought process such as something like it's possible it can be easy to generate leads for my advisory offer. There's no harm in testing this out and refining it until I figure it out. I can figure out how to make this easier. Those are really higher quality thoughts that open up the doors to you problem solving and experimenting and testing and getting to the place where you have sold that retainer offer, where you have built a pipeline, and it's a repeatable part of your business. So I just shared with you those four most common blockers, uh, categories of blockers, and some very specific ways that they look and how to redirect them. This is something that is really tricky to do for ourselves. I know as a coach that it can be really hard to find these thoughts that are blocking you, and then know how to redirect them in a way that's really impactful for your business. That's why I am a coach. That's why when I work with clients on this type of thing, oftentimes they say to me, this makes perfect sense. I just wasn't seeing it for myself. It's really hard. I'm too close to the problem. That's why I have a coach myself is because even though I know all of these tools, and I'm sharing them with you here, I teach them every single day. I apply them every single day. It can be very difficult to do it for ourselves. So I say that to you because if you're having a challenge figuring this out, reach out and let's talk about whether coaching would be a good fit for you. You can find me at consultmelissa.com to do that. My name is spelled M-E-L-I-S-A. So consultmelissa.com. Okay, that little plug, let's go back to the agenda for today. The next and last part of our agenda, which is pulling all of this together. So I want to give you a framework here that you can use to start building out your consulting retainer advisory pipeline. 
And that is number one, start with those prerequisites. Just define your advisory retainer to the best of your ability. Ultimately, the market feedback will help you to refine that. But go implement episode 126 if you haven't already. Then define your very specific goal. I gave you an example of one. I am going to sell a one consulting advisory retainer by the end of the quarter, and it will be worth 10K. That's a very specific goal. Commit to whatever the goal is that you set. And then go create a hypothesis for yourself. Create a hypothesis on lead generation. If I do X, I think it will produce Y. If I talk to seven past clients and get really good at understanding their current challenges and explaining my consulting advisory offer in a way that resonates and maps back to them getting traction against the problems that they are experiencing, I believe that that is going to produce three opportunities in my pipeline. That's an example of a hypothesis. So first you've established your retainer offering, then you've defined your goal, then you've created this hypothesis on lead generation. If I do X activities, I think it will produce Y results in my pipeline. And then the next component of this is to purposefully cultivate your lead generation mindset. It's that initial setting up your valuable mindset. My advice is valuable. What I have to offer is valuable to the clients that will benefit from it most. Really setting a strong foundation from a uh, mindset perspective in those four areas we talked about, your thoughts about you, your thoughts about your offer, your thoughts about your potential client, and your thoughts about the lead gen process for advisory work. Create a really strong foundation to start from and then continuously cultivate that purposefully. And you can use a few guiding questions. In addition to the, those examples I gave you a moment ago, when we were talking about the blockers, I thought I would wrap up this episode by sharing some guiding questions that you could be using for yourself as you're cultivating that mindset. Here are the questions. Who are the top 10 most likely retainer clients that I already know? Force yourself to answer all 10 of those. And when your brain tries to tell you why they wouldn't want a retainer, then you want to leverage your mindset to think about why might it be possible they would be open to a retainer. This will help you to overcome that fear and the way that our brain works to try to keep us from doing something that's uncomfortable and scary, which is always justifying the status quo, getting really logical about the status quo. The second guiding question that you might leverage in order to build up this mindset is, What outcomes would each of those 10 companies I just identified for advisory retainer work, what kind of outcomes might they want to achieve? Why would a retainer make sense for them? That can help you to overcome that resistance where you're initially thinking why they wouldn't want it or why they don't need it. Again, you're identifying who are those top 10 most likely retainer clients I already know, and then go one by one, what outcomes would they want to achieve? Force yourself to answer it. Your brain naturally will tell you all the reasons why not, but that's not what you're doing. What you're doing here in this exercise is why would they? And then finally, ask yourself, what are you thinking? How are you thinking in the way that I just described in those four key areas that commonly block consultants? How are you thinking right now? And how do you want to start reframing to open up your creativity about building a pipeline for advisory work? Different results requires a different way of thinking. To achieve different results, it's going to require you to think differently. So going through each of those four buckets that I just described to you and noticing where your brain is keeping you stuck where you are right now and unlocking that by reframing and leveraging some of the examples that I gave you. All right. So those are some guiding questions that you can be leveraging to take that step, which is purposefully cultivating your effective lead generation mindset, using that redirected thinking. And then finally, know that this is not a pass fail process. This is you implementing your best approach and getting results. You might get a lot of no's. No, thank you. I don't, that's not something I, my company would pay for. You know, I don't see where that fits into my priorities right now. Whatever you're getting, 
that's not a problem. It's only a problem if you take no for an answer and don't leverage the learning for continuous improvement. So know that you might really suck at this when you first start. And that's okay. It's okay to suck at this. But the point here is continuously learning from what results you're getting, which might be a lot of no's or no responses at all, and continuously refining your approach and your mindset until you do get the result that you want, which is, for example, one consulting advisory retainer in your roster and having that continuous predictable revenue and the ability to impact a client at a really granular level. All right. So that's what I have for you today. Don't forget to go take the retainer readiness assessment at icretainer.com and also go back and listen to episode 126 if you haven't done that already, because these two really go hand in hand to help you start breaking through where you might be stuck on offering retainers and building up that side of your business. All right. Thanks for tuning in, my friend, and I will see you again next week. Take care. Thanks for joining me this week on the Grow Your Independent Consulting Business podcast. If you liked today's episode, I have three quick next steps for you. First, click subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to make sure you don't miss future episodes. Next, leave me a review in your podcast app so other independent consultants can find and benefit too. And finally, to put the ideas from today's episode into action, head over to melissalieberman.com for the show notes and more resources to help you grow your consulting practice from your first few projects into a full-fledged business. See you next week.